is usually what ends up happening. I'm kind of like the slow poke, probably because I'm taking pictures and things and such. So I'll be the first to get eaten. Today we're gonna to go and try and find a lake that our property kind of backs up to or not really backs up to but we're gonna go walk out there and see what we can find and show you guys some of the stuff along the way. That's our house back there. And this is the back section of our property. And we are headed somewhere in that direction, over a hill or two. There's supposed to be a lake over there. We're gonna go see if we can hike into it and check it out. those plants not all of them um when we first got here probably two weeks ago two and a half weeks ago we came back here and those are all uh wild blueberries and so they had leaves on them a few weeks ago but they're losing their leaves now but this is kind of a nice dense patch of them they're all throughout but th this is more dense we've kind of been walking on this little moose trail right here um you pretty much need boots on because it's pretty soggy land. So this area, if you can see bandits in it, um, there are some areas that are really deep in water. And this is one of them. So if I were to step in that, I'd probably sink at least two feet. So I'm not going to. Bo, who's going for a walk? All right, so when we bought this place, we had a surveyor come out and mark all the corners of the property. So we just hit one of them. You've seen this spot before already. So this is the back of our property. And Ariel, how long is it? Uh, 630 feet. So we've walked 630 feet back and we're on uncharted territory now. Let the fun begin. Okay, so. We just hit the back of our property. We're now on state land, which pretty awesome that we back up to this because you can use this for hunting and hiking, pretty much anything you want. So, to the lake. So there's a lot of cool plants out here. I think it changes each little area now that we're up a hill. They're probably different, some different plants. And we're excited to learn about them and see which ones are edible and just learn a little bit more about the soil and the ground here. I think bows. Found some edible ones. So Eric's checking his on X app, which is an app you can have on your phone that tells you basically if you're on other people's properties, 
things like that. Um, so we're we're on state land, but we're just trying to make sure we're going the right direction to the lake. We gotta go that way. Okay. We must go. I think that's east. Humble. So I don't know if this is a white. I believe it's a black spruce, um, and it's a tree here in Alaska that has been affected by beetles. I forget which type of beetle it is, but it, it's kind of an infestation and it, I think it's worsening. And so you'll see lots of these tall trees that are not looking so hot anymore. And I think a lot of residents are cutting them down for firewood. We may do that in the future, but it will thin out the land quite a bit. So we're hiding up this ridge right here. I'm thinking we're gonna be able to get through that. We'll kind of figure out the path we're going. This really isn't too treacherous. Oregon was a lot more treacherous in my opinion. <laughs> Made me carry the fishing pole. Okay, we just came over the hill and it looks like we made it to this beautiful Alaskan lake. Let's go check it out. Spongy, it's like peat moss. It's like a mat. And it sits on the water and you can walk on it, but it bounces. So I believe, I was doing some research on it because we want to do lots of gardening. The soil here is really acidic. So this moss is like a sponge and it's really good at keeping that water. So it's adapted to this type of climate. This water is extremely clear. It's one of the clearest we've seen. And we're gonna see if there's any fish in it. Did you catch anything? Caught a couple of big ones, but didn't get it on film. Darn. I found a beaver. Look at that. You eating that thing? Okay, so rule number one is if you're headed out into the woods, you need to bring your tech gear, especially your drone. Any sort of camera stands and extra lenses, all that jazzy equipment. So that's what's really going to help you out here if you get lost in the middle of the yeah, at night. We always bring a pistol in Alaska. Uh, it's mostly the moose actually you got to worry about. The bears kind of are scared and they'll run away from you, but this is a 454. Uh, I just got a regular kind of camping survival backpack. And I don't know what we've got in here, but we got everything from flashlights to Um, emergency blankets, um, yeah, warm clothes, way to start a fire, um, you know, mittens, first aid. Um, we're not too far from our house, but you never know what can happen out here. And we pretty much bring this thing with us everywhere. Yeah, I mean, right now too, it's not, it's not that crazy cold, but it does get, it's been getting, you know, 30s at night. And I mean, what if, I don't know, what if you broke your leg or got stuck in a puddle of mud. You never know. 
So it's always nice to have, be prepared. Yeah, and it's, all, it's really, really easy to lose your sense of direction out here, like which way you're going. So a compass is a must. Do we have a compass? Yeah, we're just using our phone right now because we have our, um, we have self-service where we're at. You can also use the sun as a compass. Which way are you pointing, Ariel, using the sun? I believe west that that is going down in the west yep. thank you so for finishing right. my that's sentence that's towards our house right there okay so we made it to this lake it's our first time here and it's pretty awesome we don't know what it's called i don't even know if it has a name but there's how many lakes would you say around our house 10 15 within hiking distance there's probably more than that but anyways yes. yeah <laughs> alaska has over 3 million lakes so we got a lot to explore anyways mm -hmm. we're gonna start heading back because it's getting late they have three million name links, I believe. So this, if it's an unnamed one, is not in that three million. Pretty cool. Hold my eyes on me. So for the mushroom foragers out there, Eric has found these mushrooms on our property and he just found them again here. And although they look a lot like a chanterelle, they're quite a bit darker or more browny colored or tan. Um, and the one thing we notice when we cut them open is they are hollow. And I don't believe that is a characteristic of a chanterelle. I also looked it up and it said that chanterelles have not been found this high up. They've been found in southeast Alaska. So if, I mean, if anyone knows what these are, I did quite a bit of research. I'm still going to research some more. But in the mushroom world, you don't eat anything unless you're like 110% positive that you won't die from it. Live. Okay, so we just are coming a different way back from the lake and we actually found some sort of quadra it looks like. So pretty awesome. Maybe we can take our side by side out here instead of walking. So we're going to follow this quadra and see where it leads. Oh cool, what's that? I don't know. Almost looks like a trap. That's a trap, babe. It is. What kind of trap is it? Like a um, it's like a squirrel trap or something. They come on. Or a Martin. Eric found a cool trap out here that we're not going to mess with. But. Yeah, it's not set or anything like that. I think this trail may be our neighbors, kind of to the lake. But there are also I did a rod trails when we were on a hike the other day, it's just a little bit further from here. We found a sign saying I did a ride crossing or, you know, trail, I guess. So you have to be. And we found of... our neighbors. Oh, yeah. So it is our neighbor's trail. <laughs> so we're on our way back, kind of cutting a different trail here. This isn't too hard to walk through, but you can't really tell, at least not on the map, we have so much altitude. And there are these trees out here. I don't know if that's a tree or a bush, but um, they have these really low, thick branches. Makes it kind of hard to walk if you run into a patch of those. The dogs seem to navigate it just fine. These are the trees that I was talking about. They have these thick branches and they sit kind of lower to the ground. I mean, so you can duck down underneath them. Super easy for the dogs to get through, but not as easy for Eric and I. And the other corner of our property does go up that hill, and then it kind of reaches up to the neighbors. Their house is up on a hill. Um, so I don't know where we'll make our trail. We're trying to figure that out. 